So what the British did here, they did in Australia, they did it in North America, they did it in South Africa. The notion that communities do not own land, because the concept of ownership under British law is private ownership. And therefore they don't understand how a whole community can own. And that if a community owns, they think that individuals have no rights against the community. Uh, what we had here was a situation where communities were themselves juridical persons and therefore controlled definite territories, determined access to, to land in those territories, the functions for which that access could be given, and the manner in which property rights were allocated, transferred, redistributed, or otherwise uh, transmitted to, to uh, future generations. And one of the most important aspects of community land law or indigenous land law is that it protected the rights of the unborn as well as the rights of those who are living. And, and, and this, is, this is why property could not be sold or transferred outside the group. It could be sold or transferred within the group but not outside the group because if you transferred it outside the group you would be expropriating the rights of, of future generations and therefore they would not have no sustainable basis for livelihood for that reason. And therefore it was a very developed system of land law. <coughs> the British of course could not accept that. If they accepted that, they would not have had the power to allocate land, quote, legally. And therefore the first thing they did was to say these people don't understand what ownership is. Secondly, they are not capable of controlling land directly. And thirdly, they don't have the technology to develop it. And therefore, we are going to expropriate title, give it to settlers, pass laws that would enable the settlers to develop it whichever way they, they, they wanted it. And, and the way they dealt with occupation of communities or indigenous communities in areas that, uh, that they did not need for purposes of settlement, they put them under trust because they argued that um, the natives could not hold them as juridical persons, so they put them under trust. And the trust concept continued up to independence. And in this country now, land which is not registered in individual names is held by county councils as trustees. And that comes from the colonial concept that uh, communities cannot hold land directly. So the notion that ownership means total and exclusive expropriation of all rights to land is not one that, 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 that is known to indigenous law. Indigenous law will allow people to graze on it, others will build on it, others will cultivate it, others will transit over it, and all that is managed through a community hierarchy that starts from the family to the lineage and then to a wider territorial body. So there were, there were very, very clear rights. But you see, you are not going to find that in the literature because the British did not even bother to find out how this was done. They simply assumed that we do not see a sovereign, we don't see private property, we don't see land registries, and therefore these people do not know anything about ownership. The government that took over in 1963 consisted of people who also wanted to get into the shoes of colonial property owners. And the first thing they did was to declare that all rights to property that had been acquired before independence was sacrosanct. It couldn't be touched. And then they proceeded themselves to acquire, through sale, uh, property that, that had been held mostly by the settlers. And therefore, having got their foot into the property ownership system, they were not going to change that structure. Now, in the case of Zimbabwe, the, the inequalities were much more apparent than even here. You know, you, 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 you must be aware that uh, approximately 75% of all land in Zimbabwe was reserved for white settlement. And what the Zimbabwe constitution did was to say, firstly, that property cannot be touched. Secondly, you cannot change the constitution for the first 10 years of independence. And, 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 and thirdly, if you try to change that constitution, you must get a 100% vote from a parliament of 100, and that parliament of 100 had 20 
white settler senate, and there was no way in which it could be done. And, and, and this, is, this is the problem that they had. After those 10 years, the British and the Americans said, we'll give you money to buy these people out so you can distribute it. They never gave them the money. Another 10 years passed. So 20 years later, the people of Zimbabwe said, this is nonsense. We can't, we can't sit here waiting for land, which we are never going to get. Um, and therefore, we are going to, to invade it. And that's how the invasion started. I, 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 I was there on two UN missions on land, and, and, and really it's a mistake that was made from the day Zimbabwe got independence in 1980. Private ownership, first of all, is an alien concept. It is an instrument of exploitation of land, and of course when you introduce the market principle, what you're saying is that he or she who is able to to purchase land in the market should use it free of any obligations. In fact, when the settlers came, one of their first arguments was that because you are giving us private title, you cannot control how we use the land. There cannot be any land use regulations. There can never be uh, any state interference and so on. Now that, that battle, they lost. Eventually, the state said, look, we are also concerned with abuse of property rights, and therefore we are going to control that, 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 that kind of principle. So private property has become a means, especially in this country, by which the little community land that is still left is being appropriated and, 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 and being vested in the hands of, of the elites. And, and the result of that, of course, is that there's tremendous amount of landlessness that is increasing as people get um, thrown out of their properties through the machinery of, of, of private registration and so on.